See if the, see if the mic's live. Yeah. You're on here. Yeah. Hello. Yeah. Yeah, you're Hello, Stevie. <laughs> Looks like we lost everything there. It's very sworn too. Okay. okay. What's that? Uh, can you do it in prayer too? Hmm? Can you do it in prayer? Yeah. 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 Sure. It is. Oh, they are on there. Okay. Are y'all singing? Our feed's coming up in here, but they are already online. So let's get started. Uh, as far as uh, announcements, uh, other than just remember you know, why we celebrate Memorial Day uh, and what's going on there, and other announcements we might have that I'm forgetting, or I don't. Okay. Uh, prayer list. I talked, well, I texted uh, Larry Bailey this morning to find out about his uh, niece, Holly. And she is in Cleveland Clinic. She had surgery on the 27th. And as far as I know, it was a very extensive surgery. And the, her husband has said, the doctors cannot control her pain. Mm -hmm. So she's in dire pain up in, at the clinic. And uh, so that's what we want to pray for, that they'll find a way to control the pain. Uh, I think she actually had a... Uh, oh, shoot. Oh, good gracious. Transplant uh, of, a, I think, intestine. So... You know, that's a very invasive surgery. So let's be in prayer for that, her. And uh, glad to have Ed with us today and Julie. Uh, Julie's all masked up and Ed's there all, <laughs> got his leg all proud up. <laughs> Other, uh, I was going to ask, Julie, your cousin, Mark. What's that? I haven't heard anything from his wife. Green okay. Green. All right. Cousin, I yeah, I was just wondering. I hadn't hadn't <clears throat> gotten anything since January. So, uh, and <laughs> Steve Fisher. Who? Anyone know? Yeah, I know who it is. I don't, I mean, that Sherry has him on there. Okay. He's a husband of a friend of ours. So, um, All right. No update for us? No, okay. we haven't heard anything. Oh. You haven't heard anything either? Okay. No. Thank you, Terry. Okay. <laughs> okay. And your daughter-in-law doing any better, Harmony? They've been on a second week of steroids, but um, no improvement yet. Okay. Bad headache day yesterday. Okay. And I think that's... Did Daniel's closing go okay? Do you know? His closing did go okay, yes. Good. Yes. He used to say right now that's not the main concern. So. Yeah. Okay. And we have okay. Did you mention Helen? Did you mention Helen? Oh no, uh, our uh, sister-in-law Helen Jones. She fell in her her garage the other day. She'd been taking care of her mother who broke her wrist, and uh, 
her mother has got the cast off, but Helen fell in the garage and hit her head. So uh, that, that's not a good thing. But, uh, as far as we know, she don't have anything broke, but she didn't go to the hospital to find out, so we don't know. Uh, and her brother's having some more chemo, and I know he had some uh, uh, blood transfusions the other day, so that's uh, an ongoing thing, so keep them in your prayers. Other updates or prayer requests? I mean, what did you say about Courtney Graham? Oh, yeah, yeah. I, I've got it on here, but uh, I'm glad to, uh, Terry brought it up. <clears throat> Courtney's grandmother, she had another stroke. A massive stroke on Friday. Yeah. And it appears they can't, you know, there's no, she's non, non responsive, no, mm -hmm. no food, no nothing, and just sounds like a matter of. They said probably just a matter of age. Yeah. So just remember, you know, keep, of course, keep her in prayers, but remember that family too, this would be tough. Anything else? If not, I'll open with prayer. Dear Lord, we again thank you for this day and we thank you for the time you give us to come together, God. Lord, we ask that you be with each one on our prayer list, Lord, that uh, we just Bring them up to you. I'll put their names up to you. Uh, be with the uh, with Courtney's grandmother, Lord, that family. We ask that you be with them in their time of need. And uh, Holly Bailey, as she suffers in uh, Cleveland, Cleveland, we ask that you be with her and <clears throat> be with her husband, that uh, you can uh, offer him some solace. And Lord, we ask that you be with her doctors, that they will find something to control her pain. And, uh, Lord, we ask that you just be with everyone else on our prayer list. We just offer them up to you. And, Lord, we ask that you be with everyone here that uh, we can uh, remember why we actually celebrate a holiday for those that have uh, gone before us, Lord. Lord, we ask that you be with Larry as he brings a lesson to us. Open our hearts to what he has to say. And uh, We ask all these things in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Thanks, Tom. So she scratched her eye yesterday. <laughs> Surgery went well, but it's really hurting now. Uh, Jimmy, a bra. Excuse me. Will you read um, Colossians four two? Good morning. Uh, we have with us online this morning Don Hanshu, Bonnie Thompson, Chuck Thompson, Stacy Brightwell, David Young, Sherry Griffith, Debbie Payne. And I, I don't know whether Jim's with her with her or not. He may be here. And then of course we have Lonnie and Barb. Uh, all the way from, say, Virginia. Uh, and uh, so uh, it's nice to have you folks here. Uh, oh, oh, and we also have my old Adobe brick making buddy, Steve McClure, with us here from sunny Arizona, where it really is sunny. Um, our passages this morning are on the board. Our Old Testament reading is from Psalm uh, 130, verse 6, which I will read. Uh, verse, yeah, verse six. And, and then uh, Roz is going to read our New Testament reading, which is in Colossians, Colossians chapter four, verse two. So, um, all right. Uh, Psalm 130, verse six. My soul waits for the Lord more than watchmen for the morning, more than watchmen for the morning. Colossians 4.2, devote yourselves to prayer, being watchful and thankful. Paul's letter to the church at Colossae is a short letter, one of the shorter uh, epistles in the Bible, and it is one that conforms to a pattern. Uh, the letter begins with personal greetings 
and encouragement, and then goes on to a theological argument or statement asserting and proclaiming the supremacy of Jesus Christ as Lord over all things, including other spiritual beings that Christ has stripped of their powers. This is verse uh, 15 of chapter 2. And having disarmed the powers and authorities, he made a public spectacle of them, triumphing over them by the cross. And then in the very next verse, Paul uses the little Greek word, un. I'm going to give you a phonetic spelling of it here. He uses that, he uses that word. Um, and, and that word, that word in the Greek is translated to the English word, therefore. And um, the lexicon tells us that this word, un, is a conjunction indicating so that something follows from another necessarily. Um, uh, this word, un, is a very important word in the New Testament. Um, and you want to make it want to make a guess how many times you find this word in the New Testament? Oh Lord. <laughs> 525 times. This word appears 525 times in the New Testament. And that that uh, that makes sense, doesn't it? Because if we look at the Christian message, and if we look at how the epistles of Paul pattern themselves, we see this. Um, first of all, uh, something has happened. And therefore, or un, there are consequences. That, that may not be quite the... Outcomes. Consequences, outcomes, results, etc. I'm not sure we. I'm not sure I got the right word there, but this is the structure, um, and and this you know this is the structure of so many of Paul's letters. There is a presentation of the gospel. There is this pivotal word un, therefore, and then he talks about the consequences or what flows from that central fact. Um, the central message of the New Testament is that something has happened. Um, the resurrection of Jesus Christ and something else, everything else actually, follows from that central fact. Christ is risen. He has conquered sin and death. He has stripped the dark powers of their jurisdiction and authority. He has nailed our sins to the cross. Behold, all things become new, and therefore, un, we should live accordingly. And accordingly, Paul fought, follows this pattern in his letter to the Colossians, filling the next part of his letter with explanations and advice to the Christians there, telling them how their attitudes and behavior must change in light of the new spiritual realities they have entered. One such bit of advice is contained in our lesson this morning. As Roz read for us, in chapter 4, verse 2, Paul encourages the Colossians to devote themselves to prayer. Now, how familiar is that trope or, or saying, devote yourself to prayer? Yeah, yeah it's, it's, it's very familiar. All of us, um, all of us here this morning, and, and all of us, those who are um, online, uh, will say, We've heard innumerable sermon, innumerable sermons and lessons and have read time and again in our Bibles and commentaries about the importance of prayer. But in this particular verse, uh, chapter 4, verse 2, Paul goes on to say, be watchful in prayer. Uh, uh, do, you, do you still have your finger on it there, Jenny? Yes. Okay. What, what you've got NIV? Yes. How, how, did, how exactly is that rendered there again? Devote yourselves to prayer, being watchful and thankful. Okay, being watchful and thankful. Does, does anyone have a, a little bit different rendi rendering of that? Another another translation? Anybody? 
No? Okay. All right. Well, we'll get back to that. Uh, but pardon? Keep alert. Keep alert. Okay. Uh, the, the word that Paul uses, actually, that's translated, uh, be watchful or keep alert, is Gregoria. I think that's it. Gregoria. That's, that's an E. Gregoria. Um and it means, it's a verb, and it means to watch, wake, and be vigilant, to give strict attention to, to be cautious and active, to take heed lest through laxity and indolence some destructive calamity might overtake one. Okay, uh, now we're at the class participation part. So uh, I, I'm going to be looking... Uh, I'm going to be looking not only uh, to to the, the folks who are here with me live, but but online as well. I'm going to look for answers. And the question is this: What does it mean to be watchful in prayer? What does it mean to be watchful in prayer when Paul says, "Be watchful"? Um, what does that imply? What does it mean, Don? Pray expectantly. Okay, Don says one thing: being watchful means is. To be expected. Okay, are there others? Does anyone have a different take? Anyone have another point of view on this, or or something else we can add to this? What is it? Excuse me, I have in my Bible a note that I had made, probably one of Joel's sermons. In, in be watchful in ways God answers and opportunities God presents. Okay, um, so we're we're, we're going to say be expectant for. Answers and opportunities. God presents. I think things can go by us and we don't we don't acknowledge that that's something that God had a hand in. I mean, we just think, you know, well it happened. Okay, we can be we can be blithe or oblivious. <laughs> or uh, mentally lazy, and we can miss some stuff that's going on there. Okay, so, this, I, you know, this is really, at least in my view, what we have so far is kind of um, we we have, we say, to be expected. That's surely true. Uh, and we are expected for answers. We're expected expectant for opportunities, can it mean something other? Can it mean something else? Not, not to rule this out, obviously it does mean this, but might the word have something else? Thankful. Okay, uh, thankful. And, and of course, in the verse, Paul goes on to say, be thankful. So yeah, okay, there's that. Others? Don? I think that being expected also means that we're and thankful also means that we're watching for answers okay uh, that the answer and you have them there but yeah i think we i tend to look for the the positive what i would call positive answers but should we not also be expected for answers that don't go as we want. Okay, so because we can say know all things work together for good. Okay, it's so much we, more difficult to be thankful for answers. Okay, <laughs> so we'll say we'll say answers, the positive answers, the negative answers. Okay, can it mean something else? Be still. Be still. Okay. And sometimes that's the hardest part of prayer. Okay. Still. Be still. Okay. Clear our minds and wait for God. Okay, so uh, that that that's a little bit of a different take. Uh, Barb says, well, to be watchful might mean to be still, calm down, listen, concentrate, all that. That's something. Larry, I'm sorry. Did you say Gregorio Gregor is um, prayer? That's the, was that prayer? What was your explanation? Okay. The word Gregorio is is the Greek word that is under the English phrase be watchful. So Gregorio means be watchful. And so we're trying to explain or, or explore what, what that 
may mean to us. And we got two people with hands up. Julie, you're first. Don, you're next. Go ahead. Maybe you should also be paying attention to what you're praying for. Okay. There, there, I wanted to get to that. Uh, I talked. I, I asked Luke about this the other day, and he said, "Well, uh, to be watchful in prayer means might mean to pay attention to how you are praying, and that's a little different, isn't it? That this is sort of one thing. This is something else. That's that's a little different. So we're we got sort of three aspects here." Uh, that we can we can attach to this phrase. Luke says, you know, pay attention. Julie says, pay attention to to what you're uh, praying for. Are the requests considerate? Are the requests get you done that we submit beneficial to all who may be affected by a granting of them? Would they even be beneficial to ourselves in the long run? Don. Prayer itself is conversation. Okay. So if you're having a conversation with God, he may be talking to you and telling you something he wants. Sure, Th that that's right. And and, and, and so uh, to be watchful in prayer is, is to think of prayer, uh, think of prayer as a conversation. Fair enough, Don? Yes. And will you go this far with me? If we see an answer to prayer, we should see that not only as a gift or a grace, but a statement. And, and possibly to respond to, to that. Okay. Right. But but uh, here, let's say it this way. Um, uh, yeah, I'll get you, Mary. Uh, <laughs> I'll take Gary just in case. Go ahead. <laughs> well, suppose you're a child and you give your parents a Christmas list. And you know, you have generous parents and they give you some of the things that are on the list and they don't give you some of the others. That those, those things you receive are gifts. The things that you didn't receive are, well, uh, it, you know, we can look at what Don is saying and, and say that granting and, and, and refusal to grant is a message. And that tells us a lot of things. First of all, it tells us something about our parents. It tells us something about what they value, what they think is important. And it tells us something about where they are leading us, what they want us to be like. Okay, Mary. Be patient. God has a time to. Okay. Okay. All right. Um, all right. So, uh, you know, we've said several things here. Uh, it, to, be, to be watchful in prayer might mean watch what you're saying. It might mean be careful uh, of what you're asking for. It might mean to be watchful in prayer may be that. To be watchful in prayer may be be expectant. Look for answers. Look for opportunities. It may mean just calm down. Be still. Listen. Concentrate. Uh, we may think of prayer as a kind of conversation, and we may think of answers as as something um you know not 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 verbal but uh but nonetheless a message um stevie says press pause before we move out in all things and become thankful before we speak or before we ask um <clears throat> so what does it mean to be watchful in prayer it may mean to be careful or cautious. Watch what we're praying for. It may mean to stay awake and pay attention as we pray. We may fall into a habit of repeating the same words over and over and more or less fall asleep when we're praying. It may mean to be vigilant and expectant for answers to our prayer. Now, uh, anybody here have the Living Bible? I haven't had one for a long time, but it was kind of it was kind of vogue, you know, 30, 40 years ago. We we had them, uh, you know, they were laying all over the place. Um, it's a it's a it, I, I don't believe it's a I think it's kind of a paraphrase, not necessarily a strict translation. Uh, but the way the Living Bible renders 
this verse, uh, 4.2, is, is really interesting. Um, well, it says this. Don't be weary in prayer. Keep at it. Watch for God's answers. It's pretty direct. You know, that, that, that really kind of uh, turns the prism a little bit. It says, you know, what are we watching for? What are we watching for? Watch for answers. And remember to be thankful when they come. Uh, it, if you're like me, you may be very mindful of which of your prayers are not answered, or at least not immediately answered, um, or not answered in a way that we can discern or that we like. But how much attention do we pray? Do we pay when a prayer is answered? What should our response be when we see an answer to prayer? Well, we've already answered that. It should be thankfulness. No one will argue with that. When we see God act, when we see a work of his that we've asked for and a work that could not have otherwise been accomplished, we should be thankful. But what else? If Paul is telling us here that we should stay on the lookout for and be attentive to answers to our prayer, one reason for that is that any such answers should result in thankfulness. But are there other reasons? And, and we've, we've talked about this some. Um, what, what, if, we are, if we are blithe or casual about a response to prayer, what, what effect will that have? It, oh, let's, let's put it this way. But we're going to, to use Don's uh, idea here, and we're going to think of prayer as a conversation. And then we say, we have an answer to our petition. If we're, if we're blithe or casual, or ho-hum about that answer, what does that do to this conversation? Kind of kills it, doesn't it? Yeah. I mean, you can think about that as the same thing, like a gift. When you, if you give somebody a gift, right. their reaction tells you, I mean, you know, yeah. they open it, their reaction causes you to feel certain ways. If they're right. just you know, they're just ecstatic, then you think, oh, wow. That was really <laughs> worth it. Yeah. Uh, and then they're just kind of, you, you know what I mean. Right. And they say, well, oh, thank you. Or, you, you can just tell from someone's reality. <laughs> I mean, it's just an example, but, you know, yeah. it's the same yeah. thing. What? I mean, you've prayed for a long time, and then you're just like, okay, whatever. There it was, yeah. <laughs> uh, fine. God finally got around to that. Yeah. Um, uh, it, it, if, if we are casual or blithe or ho-hum, in a response, in our response to God's answer to prayer, it really undermines this whole conversation. It really makes it less than it ought to be. It really, um, it really takes away the idea that this 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 answer is not just a gift. It's a message. Uh, um, to overlook an answer to prayer is to slight God. Um, to make note of an answer to prayer is important because it may teach us something about our prayer life. The answer may teach us something about how we are praying or ought to pray. We're all familiar with this verse. You ask and you do not receive because you ask wrongly to spend it on your passions. Yeah, Mary. I think we need to ask if it be thy will. Okay. And we need to be acceptant of his will. Okay. Even though we don't like it. Okay. Okay, so in, in James, we're all familiar with this verse. You ask and you do not receive because you ask wrongly to spend on your passions. Well, that's pretty strong language. Our prayers, we're going, we're, that's where we're going. That's strong language. Our prayers are not answered because we are asking for things to spend on our passions. <laughs> well, you and I probably aren't asking for a trip to Vegas where everything, thing that happens in Vegas stays in Vegas. That's probably not what we're, we're asking. Probably not. All we wanted was this or that. 
But answers to prayer may be instructive and formative in our discipleship in that they may indicate what God thinks we are to be asking for. If, if, we, take, if we take one side of the coin and say, our prayers are not answered because we ask wrongly, what can we say on the other side of the coin when our prayers are answered? Let me repeat that. If we, if we follow the logic in the, the verse in James where our prayers are not answered because we ask wrongly, what can we do on the other side of the coin when we find that our prayer has been answered? What can we say about our petition then? We ask rightly. We ask rightly. Yeah, I mean, that, 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 that's no small thing. Um, you know, it tells us that maybe we had something in order. It tell, it, you know, God wants our thinking to be ordinal. That is, he wants us to put first things first. And, and you know, if we have an, if we see a prayer answered, we think maybe we're praying right. Maybe we're getting warm here. Maybe we're getting more the idea of what God wants us to do, what he wants us to be about. We, we see an answer to prayer. Um, if, 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 if our prayers are not answered, um, God may be telling us that we need to think or ask in a different way. Okay, the psalmist says that he waits for the Lord like watchmen wait for morning. Uh, what does that mean? I wait for the Lord like watchmen wait for morning. What, what can we take from that? <laughs> yeah, yeah, okay. Uh, and, and so Don says, anticipatory. Okay, when, when, we th when we think about the world of the psalmist, when we think about the world of, uh, you know, ancient, ancient Israel, you know, what was a watchman? And, and maybe, even, maybe even the better question is, what was night? When we think of, okay, right. And, and that's something that, that, you know, you and I probably don't have quite, um, quite the understanding of that the people these Psalms were originally written for would have had. Um, uh, you know, why was there a watchman at night? Because nights were dangerous. And, and the thing that, you know, and, and, and that's, you know, of course, that's still true, particularly in American cities. <laughs> but uh, uh, but it's not the same. It, when I look out my window in the middle of the night, I see light everywhere. There are porch lights. There are window lights. There are street lights. There are car lights. Light is everywhere. I can see a long way. Uh, I can see a block easily. Uh, but in ancient times, night was dark and you couldn't see, you know, unless there was a big moon, you, you know, you, you couldn't see. And it, yeah, yeah, don't. I, I can give you a modern day. Great. Let's have assuming it. Yeah. A few years since I was there, but when I was in the army, I had fire watch every night. There was someone on duty. His sole purpose was to watch for fires. Mm -hmm. The places you was in were tender boxes. They'd go up. And, oh. And so the idea. So you're like was, in a forest. Yeah. This this person would alert everyone we have a fire mm -hmm. if, if there was such a thing. Okay. And it was always on until morning. Okay. And then, well, uh, before you said that, I was thinking of the military and yeah. foreign. In foreign where sure. they were on guard duty, they probably didn't have, and they could they could relate to this, where they right. you know you don't see what's going on in the night, and you have to you can't go to sleep, and you have to be on alert the whole time because something might happen. And when they morning came, I'm sure that they had that relief. Yeah. That their watch guard duty was over. Just just uh, this may be irrelevant, but 
how many watches were there in a night? Was it was it just one guy or were there shifts? No, there were shifts. Okay. Yeah, what, like fall asleep. Five hours or something? Yeah, it was, I think usually two hours and then someone else would come on. Okay. We had to learn that in, on site units because people would fall asleep or they'd wake up and they'd have other things that they shouldn't be doing in order to stay awake, but that meant they weren't watching. So we, we changed that maybe already, I'm thinking, okay. finally. Okay. Okay. Uh, and, uh, yeah, Julie. Uh, okay, here we have, we have some good responses here uh, from our folks in uh, Brady Lane. Uh, Dennis Hanshu says, when the light comes, the danger is farther away. Yeah, yeah the, the, the bad guys can't be nearly as bold, or the wild animals can't be nearly as bold uh, when we can see what's going on. Uh, and the Lord is light. And Barb, Barb Lockery says that the watchmen were there for protection. And th that, that of course, is true, too. Um, I but I remember, too, sorry. I remember, too, that, that, that prayer is communication. And we don't just sit down one hour a day and pray. It's a continual thing right. during the daytime. And sure. I think we're more aware of what God would have us to pray for and what he would have us to look for. We sit down and have our quiet time. Uh -huh. But then during the daytime, I mean, it's a continual conversation. And I think we're more aware and we remember what to, okay. what we pray for and what God directs us to pray for when we don't know what to pray. And we have that spirit that intercedes for us. Because again, we don't always probably know what you're looking for, but. I mean, okay. it, is a, it is a continual communication. It's not just a one one sentence a day or one prayer a day and, and done. Okay. Okay. Um, so the psalmist is saying that we wait, he waits on the Lord like watchmen wait for morning. And we say that what 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 the morning will bring is light. What the morning will bring is a measure of safety and certainty that is not there during the night. Um, and as as Karen said, this has to be important because he said it twice. We understand that the writer is emphasizing the earnestness of the desire. But when, this, when the psalmist says, I'll wait for the Lord, when the psalmist says, I'll wait for the Lord, what is he waiting for? Well, when we are waiting on the Lord, what do we anticipate? What do we look for? Uh, yeah. Okay. Right. We may have to wait a long time. But what are we waiting for? Answers. Pardon? Okay, <laughs> answers. answers. Yeah. Yeah. I, I think that's it. Um, we are um, this is Tish Harrison uh, Warren from her book, Prayer in the Night. When we watch and wait for the Lord, we are watching and waiting for him to act. Uh, you know, he's not going to, to show up. And we're not waiting for him to appear as on TV. We're waiting to see his action. That's what we're waiting for. We wait for the Lord. Tish Harrison Warren puts it this way. As Christians, we take up watching as a practice, uh, a task even. We stay on the lookout for grace, for God's action. Hey, go ahead. I think I, what Karen said really affected me because I think we are, we are supposed to, and I'll say it's supposed to because some days I'm certainly more conscious of him than others. But I think that we're waiting not only for him to act, but for his presence in us. Because lots of times when I'm praying for something, it's not only what I'm praying for. It's for him to say, you silly Don, don't you know, I love you, mm -hmm. and I've got you, and I've got this. I mean, that's what he says sometimes. Okay. So it's, does, it's not, it's assurance <laughs> that he hears okay. whether or not he answers in the way we want. When we talk to him, we feel his presence presence active and present okay okay paying attention to answers to prayer tells us something about our petitions and more importantly something about god god may reveal himself in the way he answers our prayers 
just like we may learn the character of another person through conversation with him or her. So we may name, gain a knowledge of God through paying attention to how he responds to our request. Um, let's, let's talk about uh, one other idea. We've got a few minutes. Um, let's talk about... Um, The notion of surprise. What, what does the idea or notion of surprise have to do with prayer? If any. Sometimes it's not the way we think it's going to be answered. Okay. And it completely rocks our world. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, if you were in a conversation with someone... And that person never surprised you. If you were in a conversation with someone and that person, in, in response to anything you said or anything that person uh, just originated, if, that, if, it, if it never was anything other than what you anticipated, what would you start to think? Okay, maybe, maybe that. Maybe that, that they're not paying attention to you. Um, Barbara said they're boring. Okay, yeah. they're, they're boring. Okay. Yeah. I would say why pray. Okay, say why pray. I, I, I you know, I'm thinking that that if if I'm sort of you know if I'm talking to somebody, I, you know, I think I'm talking to somebody, and every response I get or everything that the other person initiates is totally uh, expected by me that there is no surprise in it at all, I'm going to start to think I'm dreaming. I'm going to start to think this isn't real. This isn't, this isn't really another person. I, I'm, this is all coming out of me. I'm just making it up. And so if, if our prayer life is real, we should be surprised. And Lonnie says, you know, that sometimes those surprises may be unpleasant. But not always. Sometimes the surprises can be quite pleasant. Sometimes the surprise may take us away from a worry. Um, just a couple of uh, final thoughts here. We're almost out of time. To watch is to wait, but to watch implies more than just waiting. It is not the board malaise of standing in line at the Department of Motor Vehicles. This is a trick Tish Warren Harrison, but I think pretty funny. It implies attention, yearning, and hope. It's the lover. Here's, here's a picture for you. What's, what's anticipation? What is waiting? What, what do we mean by it is anticipation? It is the lover, flowers in hand, searching for that one face in a crowded airport. The expectant mother, alert for the first sign of labor, or the friend pacing outside the operating room. The believer's constant posture is to lean forward in anticipation. We wait for God to act, to set things right, show up and work, whether that work is surprising and miraculous or merely a quiet change in tides. So thank you, Patricia or Trish Harrison Warren. Uh, we're done. Uh, two minutes early, and there's not even choir today, so... Uh, uh, you know you won't get your license yeah, because DMV is, they're listening. It's like Big Brother. Yeah. It's not nice to fool Mother Nature. Yeah. Uh, so uh, uh, given, uh, given Ed's injury, I will guess I'll, I'll close for us. Father, we thank you for the time you give us to come together. We thank you for your church, your word. For your son who, who has died for us, we, we thank you for all of these things. And we pray uh, that your blessing will be on the, the service to follow. And we pray that you will teach us to pray and, 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 and to pay attention uh, to the conversation that, that you want to have with each of us. Uh, we think once again of all of those on our prayer list. The, the, the needs are, are many and great. We ask once again for your hand in, in every such situation. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen.
Hey, Don. Yeah. Do you have a Bible? Do you have a Bible? Uh, Steve McClure has cited a verse here uh, to uh, to back up what you were saying. Psalm twenty seven fourteen. Psalm twenty seven fourteen. Thank you, Stevie. Uh, you know what are we going to do, Steve? Are we ever going to talk again? Uh, Luke and I, Luke and I uh, took the canoe up to uh, Dartmont uh, yesterday. No, uh, Friday. Took it up Friday. Uh, we went. Uh, we left one car at, at Dartmont and drove on up Lynch Creek Mountain to uh, Racine and put in at Racine. The water was high. We'd had a lot of rain. And we went, uh, we canoed from Racine to Dartmont and we flew a lot of, a lot of white water. It was something. So maybe if you get in uh, any time within the next, you know, few months, we can do that. So, uh, Vaya con Dios, mi hermano.